Hey guys, what up? This is Jerry P77 from J Team Games, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make holograms in Unity. Now, while this may seem like a pretty straightforward concept, you just have to go in and change the main color and the opacity. Um, that doesn't look the best, so we are actually going to be doing this in Blender, Substance Painter, and Unity. That's right, we're going to be using three softwares in one video. Now, I know this is going to be a pretty lengthy video, but I'm going to have a quick skip in the description so that you can skip around to different parts of the tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, but before we get started, I have a sore throat, so my, I'm going to be drinking a lot of water. Simply because I won't be able to talk if I talk too long, so let's just go ahead and get started. So we're going to be using Blender, Substance Painter, and Unity. Now, Blender and Unity are free, but Substance Painter, sadly, is not. I highly suggest going and getting Substance Painter. It's only $150, and it's honestly one of the best tools you can get for texturing in um, 3D models. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's go ahead and open Blender. Um, and we're going to be using Suzanne, the ma mascot of Blender, because that's just kind of a cool object. So, I'm going to hit... Um, first of all, I need to select both the camera and the lamp. If you're just starting off with Blender, this may be right click, click or left click. Um, it's probably right click if this is your first time using Blender, but if you've used it a ton and you've played around with some of your settings, it may be left click. So select these two objects, hit X to delete, and delete those by clicking with the left click. Then we don't need this cube, so I'm going to click X and delete this cube. Now I'm going to go down and go Add, Mesh, um, and we're going to use Monkey. This is actually Suzanne, but we're just going to, it's called the Monkey. Alright, so now that we have the Monkey, we need, I'm going to rename this base by double clicking the name in the hierarchy and changing the name to base. Now I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to go add modifier, subdivision surface. This basically makes your mesh higher quality. You can see that the edges don't look as sharp and it looks more realistic. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this modifier like this. Sorry. I'm going to go to shading and smooth over here on my left sidebar. Now that we've got this smooth mesh, it looks really nice, we are going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Shift-D, and this one we are going to rename to Wireframe. Because if you've ever seen um, holograms in movies and stuff like that, they usually have like a wireframe on them. It makes it look a bit more realistic. So on this one, we're going to add a second modifier, and we're going to get an Add Modifier Wireframe. Now you'll see that this makes it look more like a mesh, and you can see all the different faces. We don't want it to be this big, so we're going to change this to 0.02, and I think I decided when I was um, pre-recording this that 0.03 would look the best. That looks great. And now, this is an important step right here. You don't want to, you need to make sure that you apply this um, subdivision surface modifier first, and the wireframe modifier next. If you don't do it in that order, your wireframe will be get up, end up getting screwed up. So make sure you do that. And then on the base, we are going to go apply the modifier. That looks great. Let's go ahead and export this. But before we do that, in order for this to work with Substance Painter, we need to UV unwrap this mesh. I'm going to hit Tab on my wireframe to go into Edit Mode. I'm going to hit A twice to select all. And I'm going to hit a U unwrap. That unwrapped the um, that unwrapped the mesh. This basically sets up our mesh for being for putting textures on there. And Substance Painter requires this. Now that I've done that, I'm going to hit Tab. I'm going to go to my base. I'm going to hit Tab. U unwrap. Now you'll see that if we go into UV editing, that both of these meshes have a UV unwrap. And this is all we need to do because all we're going to be doing is basic colors, but that's just something nice to have. Now that we've got this, we are going to go back up here to default, and I'm going to hit File, Export, FBX. Make sure that down here, just so that you don't export anything you don't want to, just make sure you select Mesh. Alright, so now we're going to find out where to put it. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop for this project. Um, there's a new folder button. 
Where is it? No, oh, where is it? There it is. I hit it. I'm going to call this uh, hologram. It's important to make sure you know where you're putting stuff. So I'm going to go to my hologram and I'm going to call this um, model. Model. And then it will autocorrect FBX. And I'm going to hit export FBX. So now that we've done it, we're finished in Blender. I'm going to save this as a .blend file to my desktop hologram as model dot blend because we don't want to mess up so I'm going to save the blender file so that we can go back and export this again. Alright, so now that we have that, we are going to go and we are done with blender. I'm going to minimize blender and now we are going to open up substance painter. So this is the second part of the tutorial in which we start texturing. So I'm going to go to file, new. Now we've got this, we've got template so let's just go ahead and import our mesh. This is your import window. We're going to go to mesh and we are going to go to desktop hologram model.fbx. Now we don't need anything right here and this resolution is fine. So we don't need a normal map or anything because this is a very simple model. All right, but also you'll notice that what we're going to be working with is transparency. So it's a good idea to go over to template, metal rough alpha test. You can do that, but the way I'm going to be doing it is I'm just going to be going with this metal rough and I'm going to hit OK. This should open up Suzanne in our window right here. Alrighty, there we go. Whoops, that opens up Chrome. My bad. Force quick Chrome real quick. There we go. All right, so we have two different sets. So first of all, so let's go ahead. We have to make sure that we import this properly. So we are going to actually make two materials for these two different windows. So I'm gonna minimize Substance Painter and I'm going to go, I'm gonna select my wireframe and I'm gonna create a new material. I'm gonna call this wireframe. You can leave it like this, and then I'm going to select the base mesh, and I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to rename this base. All right, now that we've got this, Blender is actually really smart about assigning materials to this, so we're just going to re-export this as an FBX. Now, I'll probably have to create, a, we're going to create a new project, select the new mesh, the model.fbx. Make sure it's direct X and you just hit OK. Let's see if it processes it right this time. OK, so this is what you're going for. So now you'll see that we have a base texture set and a wireframe texture set. And that's exactly what we were going for. All right, so now we've got this. This is fine, except for the fact that we are missing two things. We are missing our channels are messed up. So we are going to actually add those manually. So the way we do this is we go we need base color, so we're going to keep base color, and we're going to delete height, roughness, and metallic. And we are going to add a, um, I just saw it. We're going to add an opacity channel. We're also going to add an emissive channel. Because holograms are made of light, so we want them to emit light. All right, so now you'll see that we've got ourselves. Oh, I accidentally drew there. Um, so now you can see that if we hit shift right click, we can rotate the environment. That looks great. And if we hit alt, we can rotate around our scene. You'll see that the waterframe is everywhere. And that looks really nice. So let's go to our base texture set and let's add a new material. Let's make it a, um, fill. I think it's a fill layer. Yes. So we're going to set this to a, a light bluish color. Like so. And then for the emissive, we are going to set that also 
to a light bluish color like that. Now the opacity is the main thing, but we've got a problem here. We've got our, our viewport's got a problem in that it cannot do opacity. Our model has been messed up. So we need to go back in, go to post it. I mean, viewer settings, shader, and then we need to do this one right here. You don't want to use this one down here because this is, um, this makes sure that it, either it is fully um, opaque or fully transparent. So you want to use this right here. And now you'll see that we start to get that thing that we are looking for. I usually keep it at around 0.5 to 0.7. I'll keep it at 0. Um, 6 for now. And you want to make sure that this color is a tad. Um, you want to make sure that the base color is darker than the emissive color. So just ever so slightly. You can even make it a slight green if you want to. Like that. I'm going to do 0 0.5. Uh, that looks good. 0.5 looks great. And now for our wireframe, we need to do that next. So we're going to create a new fill layer. I'm going to get this paint bucket up here. I'm going to make this one a bit greener. I'm going to make it like a greenish blue color. And you'll notice that this one has the same channels. So we actually need to go back in and change our texture set, get rid of the height, roughness, and metallic, and add the opacity and emissive. So we're going to go ahead and select this for both of those. We want this one, I want this one to be like a real. a real light blue color. Like so. You also want this to, I'm going to make this a tad darker. All right, this looks great. We're going to make sure though that the opacity is roughly the same for both. Yeah, I see that the texture isn't that good on here, but it'll look better eventually. All right, so now we have a base and we have a wireframe. Both of these look good. They don't have to be the same color, but it's all right. So now I'm going to go to file. Export textures. Now we've got both of these, and we can keep these at 1024 because these are just solid colors. And then we are going to go to um, config, and scroll down to Unity 5 Standard Metallic. This will work. This will make this texture set work with Unity. All right, that looks great. Now we are going to hit export. All right, and that should have just exported our files back to the folder. So now I'm going to minimize Substance Painter and minimize Blender, and I'm going to open up the hologram folder. And it did not export properly. That is not good. I'm going to go Export Textures. Oh wait, it asked where it exported to. We want to export to Desktop. Hologram, open, uh, can I make a new, yeah, I'm going to make a new folder, I'm going to call this textures, and I'm going to open it to there, alright, so now we have this, now let's export, and now we should have a brand new folder with textures in here.
Now, don't get me wrong, you could have easily done this in um, Unity, no problem. But I wanted to do this just to show how this works. Um, how to use Substance Painter to do cool stuff like this. Alright, so now I'm going to minimize Substance Painter and I'm going to open up Blender. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my model. So I'm going to move this off to the side, bring in the Finder window down here, and I'm going to import the model fbx file. You don't want to import everything at once because it gets annoyed sometimes, so just do it one at a time. Now we have our model with materials already made, and now we are going to import all four textures. All right, so we've got these textures, and now you'll see that each of these works really well. So now let's go ahead and set up a basic scene. I'm gonna to go to main camera, and I'm gonna turn off, turn clear flags to solid color, and I'm gonna make this black, because it'll look cool on a black background. Now I'm gonna bring in the model. If I go to the game view, you can see it right there. Now we're going to actually We're going to rotate this mesh, kind of like that, and then hit W. And I'm going to set this to global so that I can just move it forward and up. And I'll move it even closer. Now, this light's kind of bugging me, but it won't matter because when we do this later, we will be working with, when we'll, we'll need this because the light will be all right. So I'm going to maximize this just to see how it lines up, and that's way too close, so I'm going to jump out of Maximize, and I'm going to pick to my model, and I am going to bring it out, and up, let's center it, and we're going to maximize, and that looks great, it's a great way to view our mesh. So now, let's go ahead and apply these materials. If I go over to materials, well, you'll see that it's already made of materials for us. It's made of base and a wireframe. So all we have to do when we have the base selected is go model base. This is the albedo. All right. And then we go to model base mission. Now you can change this color up and down, but the problem is the thing isn't transparent. So you can use either fade or transparent. I've gotten better luck with fade than I have transparent. And then emission looks great. And now let's go ahead and do this for the wireframe because it kind of looks off. And also I think that this is a little bit too, um, too transparent. So let's see how this looks. Let me go ahead and change the rendering mode to fade. And I'm going to go to my assets. I'm going to select this one. This is the wireframe base. And then this is the wireframe emission. All right, that looks good, but I think this could look even better if this was like 0.75 or something like that. If we go ahead and we select our object and we rotate around the scene on the Y, just so it gives a 360, that looks like a hologram for sure. I mean, if I was making a hologram, that's what it would look like. But you can see a few areas are a bit lighter, a bit darker. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know what? I'm going to keep it like this. And I'm going to just save this as it is. That looks really good. The things you're seeing right there are just the overlap of the vertices. And that's why it looks so good. It's because every vertice is getting it. And so the overlap of the vertices makes it look really sharp. All right. So that's pretty much um, making holograms with Unity. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Don't forget to like this video because if you like this video, then it will go up on the rankings for YouTube's search engine and more people will be able to find this tutorial. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.